Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Sarah Godin and together we go through how to develop a config sheet for your org units, which is how to create a CSV file so that you can mass upload a set of org units. Okay, so I'm back here with Sarah. Hey Sarah. Hello Nicholas. All right, and uh, in this assignment we're going to be creating the org unit config sheet. So uh, we're looking at Sarah's screen right now, and it's in the notebook. And let's just uh, scroll down in this assignment so we can see what our first step is here. Uh, and the first step is to create the root org unit. So we've already looked at how to create org units in the past assignment. And this is just an important note of that you need to have that first top level before you can use your config sheet. Is that right? Yeah, it's uh, it's great to do that manually first, and mm -hmm. then what you'll want to do is every org unit that you create has a UID, so we'll want to know what that UID is so that we can put it into our sheet. So uh, the access I have right now doesn't allow me to click on Canada, but I'll show you what if you were to create it on your own, um, just clicking once on the org here and going show details. Um, now, depending on the browser that you use, <laughs> if you'll notice the ID kind of got cut off at the bottom, but there's another way you can look at it to find an ID. So for any region, you can just do a search. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say it's the Canada level, and then I can find the ID here. And that's the UID or the unique identification. Yeah. So what we did is we've copied that, and in our config file, that became our top level code here and then if you notice all of the provinces so the second level they're all linked to the parent here Great. so you can see how important the this mapping becomes then in the next level the different uh, you know regions are going to be linked to the, the right province parent be so Ontario. Mm -hmm. so this is uh, one of the exercises you'll need to do is just once you understand your hierarchy you'll have to set it up this way using the codes in these two uh, categories. Cool, so, so the UID and the parent UID, that's the real, um, those two are what create the structure of everything, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. knowing knowing that everything needs its own unique ID and then the parent ID shows the, the level that it's under directly. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, so for these other levels, uh, what we did is we grabbed a UID from the instance. So your DHIS2 is going to generate these numbers and you can paste them in. Um, so let's go back you're... to the, the OneNote because we have yeah. an actual link there. If you scroll okay, down, uh, you can see the link. So yeah, that's what, so that link, it's for our instance, but what you do is with your instance, you just add the slash API slash system slash ID question mark limit equals and then the number of how many you want uh, how many new unused UIDs you want to see mm -hmm. and so when you do that say, yeah let's there we go 12. 12 boom yeah so what I typically do is I'll just copy this into another sheet I'll do a find and replace just to get rid of the the code and the code mm -hmm. um, and then you can just you know copy the the string and just you know paste them in another way to do this if you're not mapping out different hierarchies like say you have one province Ontario and everything else falls below, you don't actually need to put a UID because the system will generate it for you. So the reason why we're doing it here is because we're needing to connect these to their parent. But if you're just importing a bulk and there's only one parent and you already know it, uh, you don't have to actually fill in a UID. Right, yeah. So if, if, for example, we were just doing the provinces of Canada, mm -hmm. all we needed to do is include Canada's UID and then the Canada... Canada's UID in the parent UID section for all of the provinces so the system knows what they're under and we can leave all those provinces UIDs blank and the system will automatically create them but mm -hmm. the reason that we wanted to put them in is because as you see line 11 there Ontario is actually has a lot of districts so we need to know what that is before we do that import so that's mm -hmm. why we go to that link and and assign things in that way mm-hmm so the code column is also optional. If your organization has a, a coding system that you use, you can put it in here. The purpose of having two is in different contexts, you might link to either the UID or the code. Say you're using another system like ComCare and you want to map your ComCare form. Um, for ComCare, you might map it to the UID, but there's other 
purposes where you might map it to the code. So both become optional. Um, sorry, you could interchange both depending on what you're doing. This one is required, the UID. And once you've set it up, you can't change it. But once you've input a code, you can change it. So keep that in mind. Um, the description field is optional, but we like to put the level. We find that's nice. Um, when you have to group your levels later, it's kind of helpful to know what fits in where. Everything else here is uh, can be left blank. So this is more for information. Say you wanted to have a key contact for Alberta, you could just put their information there. And if you're doing, um, what's the integration with mapping to the coordinates column here, Nicholas? I'm not sure it's... Uh... Yeah, so this is something that we actually leave blank because we do mass imports uh, mm. through the importing of a GML file. Okay. Uh, so we leave that blank. What you can do is you can import coordinates if it's a specific facility. And I offhand, I don't know the exact format that DHIS2 reads, but you can import uh, latitude, longitude, and then it'll read as a specific point. But when you're looking at uh, provinces that are that are shapes on a map, uh, the easiest way is to do the GML import, which we have an assignment for later on. Nice. Okay. Cool. So, so now we've yeah we've done the uh, we've created our our sheet. Um, and we save it as a CSV file, so just save mm -hmm. as, uh, just so that the system can read it. And then what we're going to do is, is just import it, and it should all be good. So uh, we know it's going to be good because this is the exact same thing we used for our <laughs> system, but we'll just show what that looks like and how you have to find it. So, mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, you're going to go to the apps and then that import export app. Exactly. And why don't you lead us through the rest of the way? Sure. So metadata import you can use for data elements, categories, options, and org units. So I'm just going to grab my file. It's always good to do a dry run first. So if you notice, when I press CSV, object type appeared. So I'm just going to pick what type it is. And I'm going to do a dry run, yes. So depending on the amount of uh, information you have to import, the time will vary. But it should be relatively quick. Um, what you want to see here is a little note that says no conflicts. So once your import is done, um, there'll be a little link that'll pop open. This is taking a little longer than expected, but um, 68. Now that should be consistent with the CSV file that I have. Now, given that row one is your header, um, I have 68. So I think one might be missing, but maybe it's just not reading the Canada. And then once you have this done, then you're going to have, uh, why don't you right click? Oh, we're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll look at that afterwards. Mm -hmm. So we've ignored one, and this is a kind of um, error message that's helpful to you because what you can do is search this UID in your file, and, it, and it's telling you that there might be an error. So we won't get into it too much right now, um, but knowing where your error is, then you can kind of get back to it and fix it. So it says 68 org units, 67 were updated, which is actually right because we only had 67 lines. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might get these weird things that don't exist and you can ignore it because the system ignored it. Right. So what we would do now is knowing that our 67 imported correctly, we'd just do a dry run uh, no. So we'd do the real thing. Mm -hmm. And then in most cases, you can check right away um, you could go to org units and make sure that they're all there. In some cases, you might need to do a browser cache clean first if you're not seeing the changes. And if you're running into errors, for example, the wheel is spinning forever, it means that there's something wrong on your sheet. So it may mm. mean that you have a duplicate here, you have a duplicate here, or there's something that's not mapped properly here that doesn't make sense. So if your sheet is not importing, it means you need to revisit your sheet because there's something not right. Oh, good to know. Mm -hmm. And let's just as we're done, let's let's take a look uh, look at what the org units look like in our uh, development space. Just because sure. uh, we know we have done it, uh, and we can just kind of look at what that looks like now in a clean fashion, uh, where we have Canada at the top, and then you can open it up and those are the provinces and the only one we had any information for was Ontario there. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, I think that's that's great for now. Thanks so much, Sarah, for, for leading us through that config sheet. It saves so much time than having to create them one at a time in the system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I think um, I think that's it for now.
That's great. Yeah, I'll just add one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. keeping, a, keeping a file um, up to date is really helpful because when you start having a high volume of information, it's much easier just to make a few changes on the sheet, re-import the sheet, rather than going through manually, as Nicholas mentioned. So knowing who on your team is going to be responsible for managing changes and making sure that this person is up to date on their files is, is a good thing to get into the habit of. Oh, good point. Thanks. All right. All right, so um, we'll leave it at that then. Thanks. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes, or on github.com slash logicaloutcomes. Thanks so much.